serve God. That he gave me all this talent, and this is not really mine. I, I don't have anything to really show off. That uh, I'm not any better than any such a great uh, businessman out there. They do maybe a lot better than me. Uh, but all I can say is, I'm just such a blessed man that I got so much from him. That uh, and I just have to be in that. Place on that moment and just do whatever he said. And I have to follow that direction, and and I end up here. So, and about also this time, you know, speak about my business and all this. I'm I'm really uncomfortable talking about my business, and because uh, I don't have much to really show show uh, what I have done so much. But uh, if this is the purpose of a show, how God planned. And uh, uh, moving along, all what he had done and uh, prepare my life, then yeah, sh sure I, I have to share that story. So uh, my focus is there. Uh, I want to share uh, God's word, uh, Colossians uh, chapter three, uh, twenty twenty two. So I'll just read it. Slaves, obey. Your earthly masters in everything and do it, not only when their eyes is on you and to win their favor but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for the man. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ who is serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for his wrong, and there is no favoritism. And chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, uh, Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Um, the, the, basically, I, this is the verse that I uh, pay so much attention uh, uh, when you work at it. I think a lot of people here uh, want to uh, actually the focus is they they want to run business and they want to be an employer they want to be an owner entrepreneur and be successful and I think the principle is the same thing when you as an employee if you do not put your heart there and do as to the Lord if you don't ever do that. There's no way you can be a great employer. So it, the, the concept is the same thing. You know, they, uh, chapter four, verse one said, you know, masters do it uh, to you, to your people with uh, justice, fair, and it's the same thing. Either your employee or employer, it's the same concept. If you do it as to the Lord, it's going to be successful. And. The, the main key of my uh, my business. A lot of people keep asking, "What's the secret? What 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 is really make your business so successful?" And, and especially this restaurant industry, they they uh, they have those uh, uh, rankings. Put it in the fast growing, fastest growing franchise, best growing restaurants, uh, and uh, whatever successful in all those. We have a we had a, quite a lot of records, so they, they with that record they want to share that. They want to hear that story, and my always know that my last answer is it's a, it is a very simple thing. Well, if you read, if you read the Bible, the Proverbs, there are thirty one chapters, and, and if you read every chapter every day and then read it and put it in your heart, practice as it is. That's the wisdom, and, it, and uh, that, that's the best way to success. And uh, it's really simple. If you really practice that, that's what it is. Uh, it, it looks like a really simple, but a lot of people uh, just read it, but they don't practice. If, they, if you don't practice, it's nothing. You know, if you read uh, the, all, all those fun stories, but if you don't really practice it, it is not going to uh, make a fruit out of it. So. 
I think our company is based on that. that I try to practice more with it. it. It gave me so much of wisdom. So uh, just do as it is. It, it's pretty much simple. And uh, you know, I want to go back and how I started this company. Uh, and uh, I want to share uh, some of my company performance things first, so like I can share what what has been uh, uh, with the happening in our company. So I started this uh, 2006 February, um, and uh, actually my previous company was a Boba Boca, which started 2001, and before that I was a computer programmer, so I never had any uh, retail experience, uh, no restaurant ex experience. I, I don't really cook. My, my wife is a great cook, so I don't have to. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it all, all this, so, so, so basically you know what this IT nerd can do a, a, uh, in a restaurant business, especially in franchising, and uh, that's a totally different kind of business. But, uh, through God's wisdom, you know, the knowledge, you can catch it. You, you, you put your, um, if you study, if, if you put your heart in there, you, you can really get through that knowledge. But, but wisdom, I think that the only place you can get is really Bible. It's a, such a high, powerful thing that uh, even I do not have a knowledge about this restaurant. I know how to run this because of that wisdom. It's always wisdom is way superior than the knowledge. So it is, it is so important. You always look for wisdom like Solomon. What he, he first looked for was that wisdom, right? So that is uh, the first thing you can find. So through, through Boba Loka, uh, to the, I started in 2001, uh, one week before 9-11. So my first time retail business, I opened after one week. 9-11 happened. So God gave me a, such a wonderful timing that I opened and without any experience and boom, every, everything just shut down and I uh, was scared. And, and actually my, my wife got hurt uh, while she helped uh, uh, operating that. And I, I thought, let, let, let's just forget this business. You know, I, I was really about to uh, yeah, just, just drop it. I was so disappointed. But I think God gave uh, that, that wisdom that it, it is, you know, he, he prepared something and he, he, he always made a plan that I don't know what I did, but I, I just used my uh, maybe somewhat business system analysis that uh, studied uh, some uh, research of a restaurant before and that helped me a lot and uh, somehow it really took off. I didn't expect that much, but God always satisfied more than what I expected. That always happened. Boba Loka, that happened. Yoga, that happened. And right now, that happened too. Because if He does not show more than what I expect, if He, if he does just meet the, what I expect, then I might think, well, because I, I did. Because I'm so smart. I planned this. And this happened. So then God is not there. So that's not the way. So God, He always want to show me, hey, look, He did it. You know, I did it, so you have to trust me. And then it's just keep happening to me. And so I cannot really deny. I have to follow that. Um, and, and through Boba Loka, I, I got some experience of running stores. Maybe first three years I opened up uh, 33. 33 stores. Uh, we owned a total of about eight stores and rest of franchise. So I made a lot of mistakes because I didn't have any experience. Think about a computer nerd open the restaurant. It's just going crazy. Just uh, lots of customers come in. What do I do? It's just running around, do all the wrong things, and then trust people without uh, you know, all this you know, contract, all that. So I go through all those mistakes. But God always make a way to overcome that. He will give me that difficulty, uh, that amount, amount of difficulty that I can come over. And 
I made a, some uh, uh, dumb mistake, like maybe I, I, I violated law and then without knowing that I, uh, so I, I did a licensing without franchising, uh, franchise register. So which is very dumb mistake that I should register first and then do franchise practice. But what I did was I asked, when I asked uh, my attorney, well, you are practicing franchise without registering. So I had to go back to my license. There were about 15 people. I need uh, general release. General release means they have to sign off that I did not do anything wrong. So they will not claim me anything. So usually in, in business, when people want to sign the general release, they want something. This is a great opportunity. This guy did something wrong. I want to find, uh, get something. So my attorney, when, uh, when he asked, uh, I have to get that, he said, this is impossible, so uh, think about something else. And, and, but there was nothing else uh, uh, other matter to go through the fran franchise registration. So I, I uh, talked to all uh, of the licenses and, and explained the situation and, and asked uh, the sign a general release. So I got all 15 signed up. And, and, and attorney, my attorney uh, saw that and he was shocked. He never said that. Well, I don't know. I think this is the best way. He, he's an expert. You know, the attorney is an expert, but he didn't think he, this will not be ever uh, work. But a person, I'm not a business expert, I'm not a legal expert, but you know, it happened because when I deal with people, because I did God's way, I didn't ever hurt people. I did with the heart to serve people. Want to uh, take, want to take them as a real partner. Not I just want to make a profit out of them, but want to grow business together. And that's what happened. So had that. So things like that. I made a, lots of mistakes, but always got showed the next step to go over it. So. And I had the bubble look until 2004, uh, 2005, around that time, and, and uh, the business was, uh, the sales wasn't growing, just uh, stagnant right there. So I tried to find something else. I have to add, I want to add some item in there. And uh, yogurt is the one. Uh, I was thinking that, well, there was a, a each food industry has some kind of a, a cycle. Uh, at that time, yogurt was about 15 year cycle that I saw. It was dying and then up again. So maybe yogurt is, is possible that I can put, uh, put it here. So I tried to uh, search it and, and then finally I made a decision. Okay, uh, I want to get a self serve concept, put it in. I just, just put the yogurt machine and then uh, wall cut out. I just put machine eight, eight of them. I did right here, Fullerton, Chapman, and um, uh, what is that? Uh, it's right there, yeah, State College. And then, uh, so it, it was very cheesy, it just pretty, let's try, what happened? And then I saw people really, uh, really into it, they love it so much. So, and then I, I changed my plan, okay, now I, I want to change my uh, direction. So prepared the concept and uh, opened the store. 2006 February we opened the very first store. So this uh, uh, next year February it's uh, become almost eight years. So from that time, uh, 2007 we opened the second store in, in Irvine. Uh, and 2007 we have uh, three stores. 2008 we have 28 stores. 2009 63 stores. 117 stores, 217, and as of now, 265 stores in 20 states and three other countries, Venezuela, Mexico, Australia, and we're about to open in Dubai. And, you know, our record, we have so many records, but what I really like, the, the one of the record I really like is we have only a total of five stores closed so far. Five stores out of 265. When this company can grow, 
uh, one store to 265, five is still closed down at a very, very low rate. Because this record, usually a company, they don't want to uh, share this how many stores closed down because they, when the emerging concept, when they grow, want to grow so fast, usually easily 20% of this uh, chain store could be shut down. Uh, when they focus on their growth only, yeah, that always happens. You know, even 30, 30% can shut down. Think about when you, when you join the chain store and, and the chance of survival, uh, cold, chance of closing down is 30% chance. Would you join it? No, right? I think it's a, it's, it's a heart of God that if you're a Christian, so if you're a real Christian, when you read Bible and you practice it and what you do there, it is about the relationship with God, Him and me, and the relationship with me and others, right? Love your neighbor, love your God. So if you have that principle strong, then think about it's clearly said, love your neighbor. So so love your people around you, and think about your franchise when they join and what would you do? When you select a location, what would you do? You would do, that's my location, that's my business. This is all my money I have, so I'm going to open in that location, and I have to, I have to success. And there's no way I can fail. Then, if you do that, then, then, only a few stores can shut down. Actually, until 100 store, we didn't have any store closed down. And when we reach uh, later, 200, maybe two, uh, two, three stores closed down. And you, it typically uh, about a new, new building, new development. Uh, so new stores going in, but the, uh, all the tenants is not full. So if we have full, then basically that build the whole building that's more so it's really hard to predict in you know, those, those situations so we had uh, those few uh, mistakes made uh, but anyway uh, it, it is not a way to avoid my responsibility it's about uh, I'm still responsible I'm trying to help them uh, you know when even they closing closing time and be responsible also financially their leaves and all that I bought uh, and, and people say, hey, that's not your lease. You, have, you don't have to do anything. But franchising, it, 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 it's, it's their money. They're stuck with it. They have to get out. Then I have to, I have to use my skill to get out of that. So I use my attorney to help them to break the lease and then also you know, help them pay, pay them some rent for them and then um, give them loan for, uh, to pay back and for all that. And then their franchise is totally surprised. They never see anybody because legally I don't have any uh, responsibility for that. But uh, what I do more than what I supposed to do, and you know, really I try to put my heart there. And even even this guy, he lost store. He still wanted to second store, third store. Because <laughs> he trusts me. He knows that. He just had a that location one time, and he trusts the brand, he trusts me, and uh, that's what it is. And before, I was so concerned about showing uh, I am Christian, because if they ever see me doing wrong, I don't want to make uh, our God shame. So I was, so I was always um, afraid that the sharing that open up Christian. I, I think uh, uh, three, four years, uh, it changed my mind. You know, maybe I'm not strong enough. I, I'm not really uh, stand up. That you know, it, it, it's about 24 hours that I worship God. That I shouldn't be anything shame what I do. So I should share this. So um, actually, one time uh, our franchise conference, my wife just asked me. Go out. Uh, you have to. You have to sing. So I knew it. 
So, okay. What I can sing? Only gospel, right? So, I did some uh, uh, Amazing Grace and uh, you know, a few uh, gospel songs. So, everybody knew that I am Christian. And then from that moment, and everybody now, that is why this is a Christian company. That is why this happened. And all the Christians came up, and they were so glad. They had a high five, and they were so excited to share God's story and all that. So it was a really exciting moment. And sometimes God sent people, franchises, they had no idea I'm Christian. They just come. God told me, join here. You have to do this business. And then this guy just, just came to me. You know, God told me to uh, uh, pray for me and my wife. They have no idea who I am or who she is. The first time we shake hands, and then uh, they talk about this, and all of us with the shocks. And then not only one, there are, there are a few other people that just, just come along and they want to share their story. Uh, but uh, God sent me here. So, it, you know, when I hear that kind of story, it's scary that, wow, okay, I got, I got to do it really right. If I, if, I, if I mess up here, I'm messing up God. <laughs> so I have to do it right. How this company made uh, such a progress is also, I want to give you more. Why, why the company can, uh, starting from one store, can grow such a fast and a stable company. Um, there's a few things. So, so first, you know, when, when I mention about uh, love your neighbor, so I have to really include uh, people inside the office. I really have to love them. So I think it starts from my family. So it starts near from me, right? So let, let's say if, if, I, if I love uh, so orphan out there, widows out there, and then give uh, such a big donation and then a show off of that. But if I do not love my own daughter, my wife, or my people in the office, I'm such a liar. Uh, I'm not transparent. And God knows that. He knows everything. So there's no way I can, I can lie about it. And I know that. So it has to start from the company. Then what do I do? And it is about, I want to find the right people that has a uh, right mindset, which is, uh, I have this five uh, mission uh, in our company. The first thing is THTK, totally honest, totally kind. So we want to be honest and I'm kind. And then uh, <coughs> respect. So we want to respect. Uh, Actually, this, uh, the basic thing is, is that God wanted to have in, in our company, just, uh, in our heart every day. So, for example, I'm trying to find people who uh, have this same mindset. So bring that people and have them join in. And the next thing I, wanted, uh, I did was try to build a culture that this is our company. So I, keep emphasizing about we want to be honest all the time. We want to be kind to others. We want to help each other. And I want to build a company that I love to come here. Uh, I want to help others. Uh, this is fun. And this is not about money. There is a higher goal. There is a just better thing. And try to implement that. And that is what really made this company take off. And maybe from outside, people look at just the just, uh, total number of stores, how many customers going, and uh, the revenue, all that, right? But actually, those are outside showing. What's really inside happen is this culture. So I know there are lots of companies out there that copied us. You know, we, we started this uh, self sub model uh, very first. So they, they want to copy this all, every, everyone is self so right now. But what they should copy is not, not this egg machine or those decoration color, pink and green, or the floor and all that. No, you don't have to copy that. 
what they really have to copy is this about people part, the culture, the love toward our people there, and, and, and share this love, and they can trust. And so that's God's way. I mean, it's a pretty simple. If you read the read Bible, it's all there. It's a Proverbs. If you read there, it's all there. So just practice that. That's God's way. So in a way, it's, it's pretty simple. Business, people like me, uh, IT nerd, had no idea what uh, uh, retail business, restaurant business, had no idea. But when God gave me the wisdom, uh, it's all written in the Bible, uh, just practice that. Read it every day. Put it in your heart and practice it every day. That gives so much wisdom. And through that, any concept of business can be successful. It's a pretty simple. It's about it's all about people, which is that's what all God about. That's a, God. He loves us. So basically, we wanna we wanna do that. We do. We wanna do the same thing. We want to love others. We want to love their spirit. And then through that, we want to be a role model of a Christian. So which is, they want to be Christian. And I had this one moment, I was so happy to hear. It was uh, one a new hired person suddenly came to me. You know what? You guys are real Christian. I never seen it. And I was, I was really surprised because this person seen many other Christians that they do not you know, live by the words. But here we want to do that. So we, you know, in our company, yes, not everyone is uh, Christian. You know, we have a uh, uh, few Christians. We want to sh- I always share with them, Christian, this is what we have to do. We have to uh, live by His word. You know, we don't want to be a Christian uh, when we are out of the church. No way. We have to be 24 hours Christian. I think the problem we have here is a lot of them, we become Christian when we are in church. That is very wrong. God knows. We cannot, we, we cannot lie. When you sleep, when you talk to your wife, when you talk to your daughter, when you talk to your friend, when you treat any real friend, you have to be a Christian. So it has been a, a 24-hour thing. So that, we want to share that. And then through that, people know. And uh, they see it by everyday thing that uh, we live by. It. So by uh, show, show as a uh, role out of that, People understand. And after a while, and now people start to talk about, this is Christian company. This is a Christian company. Well, we never ever put it as I put it, Christian company. You know, obviously it, it's, it's uh, some illegal thing that I cannot discriminate by religion, right? So I can't do that. But people know by our behavior. They just say Christian, this is a Christian company. And one, one of our um, general counsel, uh, his wife hear about how our company running, how people so love about working in the company. Uh, people, when, when other outsiders uh, come uh, visit uh, our office, they all say the same thing. Why people all here look so happy? They're having fun. Seems like they don't really work much. <laughs> yeah, I saw my concern. Yeah. Do they really work? <laughs> I trust them. I travel a lot. I, I go out mission trips so much. And, uh, I think last three weeks I, I was out of country. And, and I, I don't really concern so much. Because I, I trust them 100%. And then for them, uh, they just want to, hey, you take care of your thing, we'll, we'll take care of uh, here, so don't worry about it. We have uh, so much uh, trust. And, and they talk about, so most of them, this is the company that I never, ever expected. This is the best company I ever worked in my life. 
And so most of the people will talk about it. And I think that's what really made me successful then. And it, it's, a, it's a really true love that uh, God wants to share. And by practicing it, they see it. And then I'm sure there are a few people that want to be a Christian. And, uh, and, and some people, they were... Uh, they, were, they used to be Christian and, and, and they, they were away and they don't go to church anymore and then they changed mind there and they uh, start to go to church and start to pray. So when I hear that, uh, I feel yeah, this, this is worse than uh, I start this business maybe because for that one person. Because that much God loves each individual. So I, I felt so uh, blessed that He used me and I didn't really do much. I was just trying to follow his instruction. And he put me all this uh, step by step. He prepared. And there are just so many stories that uh, last eight years that lots of things happened in the company. But each step, each step, God prepared something better, way bigger than I expected. He gave me. So now, I feel, you know, I know I, I have this ambition. I want to make a company grow big and I want to impact more uh, other people and, and I, I want to do that. But, but I feel I think there is a better things than just running the business. And serving God is a, it, it's a great thing. So I'm, I'm somewhat shifting my role in uh, doing less, less work in, in the office, and instead uh, putting more time in uh, visiting missionaries, uh, give them uh, uh, you know, advice or something. I can do my part to help them. And those are, uh, I feel, more happier through that. So uh, my wife and me, we spend more and more time toward that. I, I, this is something maybe we know that that is our destiny. That's what we're supposed to do. And, and also, I'm, I'm so blessed that I have a, such a great wife that uh, she is a, a prayer warrior. I mean, she's right here, so maybe she's a, that's a embarrassed talking about her. But I think this is something I should share that and those uh, uh, maybe people who, who need to find uh, their you know, spouse Maybe she's uh, like a great role model. But if she if she start praying um, at four a.m., three o'clock, I mean uh, three hours. I mean that's just the beginning of the day, and then of course throughout the day she prays a lot, and then most of the time she hear uh, the revival and also consulting other call other people, encourage and. Uh, try to help them and basically uh, contact with missionaries. Basically, she's a full time devoted Christian that at home, I guess she works out way more than me. So think about, but she doesn't really pray for my company. Because <laughs> 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 she knows that this company is his. He's, uh, he's the owner, he's a senior partner. Just junior partner. I'm mean, just your. Um, anytime, if you ask me, I can drop that and do something else, and I have to drop that. Then I, I am ready. So uh, I know if this is something crazy that people might think uh, in our company. People, if, if they hear, they'll be shocked. But yeah, that that's my really uh, in, in heart because it, this is temporary thing. You know, okay. Whatever happened, I had to follow his direction. Um, uh, if you tell me go out, uh, uh, maybe uh, sing gospel, then I'll just do that. Or sweep the street, I'll just do that. If that is, if it God's desire, then I have to be that role. So either something big or something small. And for his eyes, there is no something big or small. So anything, even that small, small help to any others will be such a big, wonderful reward I would get uh, in the later. 
so when I see him, I don't want to be shamed that, well, that is just like, maybe too small, uh, I didn't do it, I don't, I don't want to hear that, so I want to be a, be a hundred percent in him. And uh, I, last, last Friday, I just had the 50th birthday, and I felt like, okay, uh, this is my, half of my life is gone, you know, what's next? And then, like that time, I got so sick, the, I got so hot, so cold, and in about 36 hours, I couldn't move out of bed. Was I mean, she, my wife saw me, the first time I was sick that much. And then through that time, I, I thought of a lot of things. If my body cannot function like this, there's nothing I can do. So if God decides to take me, then I'm done. There's no way that I can do anything more. So it doesn't matter if people respect me of something, whatever, good business skill or this and that. It doesn't really matter anything. It, it's about when he gave me the time, then I had to be a good servant, good student. So and it was a, such a precious moment that, that 36 hours in bed, just sweating and, and so sick, but uh, it was also a you know, spiritual blessing that I have a healthy body, that I can serve God, that I have to, I have to keep doing that. So, well, that, that's my, uh, I know that's my final destiny, my wife and me, so uh, that, that's uh, wonderful that God gave me this, all this opportunity. I always feel when I have to talk in front of people that I don't know, I, I have nothing much to talk about it. I, that, but still, my wife said, Well, this is God's work, so I know you shouldn't talk about yourself. Just show God's glory. That's it. Don't talk about you. You have to be laid down and, and just uh, show uh, what He has done in your life. So, uh, okay, I'll do it. So that's, that's why I came here. But, uh, again, uh, yeah. first thanks uh, to God that uh, He gave me this opportunity. And uh, uh, I, I want to, you know, if any individuals that want to uh, share a story or any question, I mean, there, there really are lots of that. That small stories that happen. So I cannot really share a whole thing, but. There, so much, uh, you know, God uh, made a situation that uh, grow this company, impact others, uh, uh, make other Christian and bad happen. So, uh, you know, sure, this is, uh, through this company, God worked a lot. So I can share that. Uh, thank you very much, and, uh, and all to His glory. Thank you.
any of those, I have to pray and then and see God's face. Um, what do I do? Then He will He will give an answer. So uh, if you follow that, I, I think that's a basic rule. I know that I have to basically uh, decide to sell uh, the company and then start new, uh, total new business. So uh, it was a, a big change. But um, so basic you know, rule was that uh, if God gives a piece, piece of mind, then I will do it. So I, uh, there, are, there are other uh, situations that are way bigger than that, you know, really something uh, the whole company could shake and that happened. And, uh, that also I ask God, you know, if this is the right direction, then He gave me uh, peace, then, then I go for it. You said you have a company of five missions. Uh, you talked about the first one, uh, TKTA. THTK, uh, Respect, and uh, uh, other three are the, it's not really uh, much different than, than others, uh, which is, I mean, uh, uh, innovative. And let me show you here. I'll show you with everyone here. Uh, I'll read uh, small things. Okay, THTK, totally honest, totally kind. We work and live with great integrity, accountability, and compassion. And humble, we are modest, respectful, open, and never arrogant. Despite our successful success, we grow by giving and accepting honest feedback, even when it is personally challenging. Passionate, we love we we love what we do, reach for the best, and strive to positively impact the lives of uh, our guests, uh, colleagues, franchises, and uh, vendors. The letter is so small, I feel like getting old. And, uh, <laughs> I was able to read it pretty well. But <laughs> innovative, with an open mind and fresh ideas, we are continuous, uh, continuously evolving and uh, creating new possibility in our products the way we do uh, business and our interactions with others. And uh, the last teamwork, we work collectively by capitalizing on the strengths of every member of our team and collectively on both our successful and our uh, shortcomings. So that's, that's what we put. So uh, a lot of time in our director's meeting, they talk about number. So what's our goal? What's what's next? Because you know they want to uh, go to next step and they want to uh, uh, achieve next thing. And and a lot of time they ask me uh, what's next. I try to let them decide. I uh, so in, in our directors meeting there are, there are about eleven people. So I try not to talk much. Uh, okay, first, they know better than me. They're experts. And if you, if you think about people has uh, 30 years, 35 years experience in franchising industry, restaurant, think about me, IT nerd, I have only a few years, you know, I have nothing to say much, right? They are so smart. Let them, let them handle it. But what I focus is, this is basic, our mission, that I will make a decision based on this. That's all. So I try to make that. If they talk about this number so much, they're trying to cut the cost this and cut uh, the expense this and that, and they're trying to squeeze. And I have to ask them, are we doing the right thing based on this mission? Let's go back to the principal. And, and, and then, they discuss and they, they adjust it, and they make a goal and they turn it. So basically, they run the company. So I'm, I'm a, like a outside watcher that uh, uh, it's like a referee. 
I may play by the rule. <laughs> it's a kind of funny concept that my company uh, running a uh, uh, strange way. Uh, I think that's God's way. Yes. Uh, I'm a, a small business owner with a passion for world missions as well, so I, I want to really thank you for being a great role model. Uh, and I know in your company, uh, there's a very strong Christian theme uh, to serve um, people uh, and the Lord as well. Um, I had a question first about whether uh, you serve as a mentor to any Christian uh, uh, business leaders outside of your company. Um, and uh, the second question is, um, I know you were generous with your time uh, and your wealth on the mission side. Do you also encourage your directors to uh, follow your steps? Yeah, um, I think first, uh, uh, maybe mentoring others. Yeah, uh, you know, some people ask me about you know, business. Yeah, I, I, I try to put some time for them, and, but there is no like formal way I'm doing it right now. Uh, uh, but when there is a, a Christian day, they want to uh, learn something, you know, how, how, how they take care of it. Especially about people part, because uh, a lot of people think this Christian and people managing you know, is opposite way, and they're having a very hard time. Should I punish them, or should I love them? You know, which is the right way, it's a really hard decision. And they, they ask me about those. So, so yeah, yeah I mean, that's a, maybe most question I get from them. So, so I share my experience, what I have done, and usually by giving them uh, my mistakes, what I did and wrong, then they learn. Because actually you learn way more from your mistake. Right? So I, I share my mistake stories and they learn it. And then um, the directors, uh, I try to I, not to push them. Uh, I try to show them as a role model that they see me, what I do, so they know uh, how uh, they want to be. So I, basically, all of them, they they want to be uh, like me. So I tell them. Be Christian. That, that's why it is. Right? If you become Christian, that, that becomes like me, and that, that's it. Um, yeah. Um, I, I've been working in the uh, corporate world for, for some time. Um, and, you know, I've had thoughts of starting a business, but um, when you were working in IT, what were some of the thought, thoughts that you had, or what were some of the processes of, of coming to the decision of having your own business? Um, did it come through basically um, lots of prayer, or just did you hear, did you hear a voice you know, from the Lord? Or? Um, yeah, actually that part is a uh, somewhat, uh, maybe somewhat disappointing answer. <laughs> <laughs> I trust my wife. And actually, so she kicked my butt. <laughs> Don't just sit down and do, do, uh, in front of the computer all day. <laughs> you gotta do something better. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, actually, she really hate me uh, studying because I have to uh, catch up uh, IT, so I have to study a lot. And, and she uh, she didn't want to uh, be in that and just so all the rest of my life. So she, she wants to have someone, um, something for retirement. And I have uh, maybe one or two uh, franchise businesses to set aside. And that's what it happened. So I didn't mean to really go and in, get into that business. But uh, I didn't mean to quit my IT. But that's what God changed the direction. And so something I didn't expect. I didn't plan it. And uh, I think that God plan things, changes things sometimes in a really weird way of uh, you know, changing course. But, um, I think important is 
it is about um, it is about I want to do God's work. I want to do something great for for Him. Uh, it is not about that. It is it is more about the more uh, uh, I experience this. It is about am I really living? On his word right now. It's not about I want to do something great for him. No, forget that. Before that, am I staying firm in his word? My, the, the every minute, every moment of my life, am I being a real Christian? I think that's really no count. That trying to do other something fancy, something great work out there. You know, a lot of times, actually, you uh, you're trying to show off. And uh, actually, right before we come here, we talked about. I think there is three things that most people uh, fall into. Right? I totally agree. It's uh, it's a gold, so it's just money, glory. Yeah, it's it's a fame. You want to be uh, uh, recognized, famous, and and then next one is a goal. So for guys, yeah, and that's a, a, that's true. A lot of times that happens. So I have to be always guard myself. I don't want to fall into money or fall into this fame or fall into woman. I have to then before I try go to a, a big mission trip. I have to look myself. Am I living by His word right now? Try to protect any enemies cannot attack any uh, devils cannot uh, attack me. I have to do that, make it form, and then do uh, his mission. Uh, that that's what I feel. Yes. Uh, you mentioned like directors. Are they uh, like board of directors? No, actually not board of directors. It's uh, uh, <laughs> above manager, uh, below uh, uh, VP. And, uh, and not all of them are Christians, but yet some Christians and non-Christians. Right, right. There are only uh, about three, four Christians in there. Right. So then, when you hired them, uh, how did you, uh, what was the information about your mission, right? Right. Uh, was it your, like, uh, information about the activity, like, or can you share with us how you can do your hiring practices, hiring your... Hiring, uh, process that how do I filter them? Uh, they are aligned with uh, mission. Directors. Yeah, directors. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually not just directors. Uh, just basically, uh, you know, any people uh, joining. There is no uh, easy way to figure out people uh, if this is the right person or not. Uh, actually, this is the maybe hardest part of the business. Actually, so like I mentioned, it's about it's about people. Business is about people. Who you have <coughs> is that decided. Your success is based on who you have around you, and how much I can uh, have work for me for the company. Uh, uh, that is what will decide about the company. So uh, hiring them is like 50% of the process you are know, happening in that hiring process. So uh, I'm not an expert to go into that interview, to go through uh, asking all the questions, but instead I use a consulting company and ask, okay, this I have this five mission, and I want to find the people based on the, according to this meet. So you know when 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 you at, uh, look at people, there are two parts. One is technical part, the knowledge part, and then the other part is about ethic, moral, honesty, integrity, right? And about 95% of the reason of firing people is because of this integrity, honesty, moral, ethic. Not because of the technical skill 
knowledge. <clears throat> so that means when you hire, you have to think about 95% of effort toward that, right? So that's what we did. So try to analyze this person's integrity, honesty, you know, ethic, moral, all those. So, so I get help from consulting company, have all these questions ready, and I go through them, filter them. So we go through five to six people interview process. It's not such a big company, but we did crazy you know, interviews. So, uh, so I know they get so tired of this, you know, I guess so. <laughs> and when, when it comes to my, so the last one, or interview, but basically, because uh, yeah. I'm not an expert, I, I depend on this consult consulting company and my people that they go to the interview. So it is about, instead of trying to find out something about him and, or she, uh, I try to explain who we are, what I try to do and then try to look at this person's, how they react, then you know, that's pretty much it. it, it then the, the person will, will talk about more about it, he, his side story of a related this. So uh, then what do you do on Sunday? And then those uh, helping others, oh yeah, I go to church, you know, so they school this and that, yeah, they talk, I'll talk about it. Then even I don't have to talk, I am Christian, and I cannot ask if, if you're a Christian, I cannot ask, but then it figures out. What do you do on Sunday? Then that's it. If this guy <laughs> Christian or not, that's right. So in all these techniques that I ask and then I find out. Uh, so yeah, I heavily uh, relying on the consulting company a lot. So I mean they they're in a great uh, you know, great source that a lot of times when, when you don't know much and rely on that. So, um, is there anybody who want to uh, have a, uh, this good hiring process, which is so critical part that I really uh, emphasize, do not try to uh, hire by yourself. No, don't make that kind of mistake. So I think it's in the Bible too. Hiring uh, uh, somebody, uh, just uh, just anybody, and uh, it's like you know, you know, I think something you, you go to the market and just grab anybody and bring it to work. You want to do that? No, you want to find the right person, right? So it's almost like that. You're, you're going maybe in some marketplace and just go grab anyone, bring it, and have that work. No, you, you don't want to do that. So I would invest invest so much that uh, consult uh, with the hiring company that the hiring process go through very deep. Actually that's, uh, actually that's what I did. With, uh, I went through the hiring company and asked them this is what I want, I mean to do that. And then the person in charge, uh, the owner, was so good so I decided to hire him. <laughs> So he's in our company, and after that, he has an amazing job that we have a, such a great people. So think about 50% okay, done. The, the other 50% uh, is by my behavior. If I did according to the Bible every day, done, they follow that, they respect that, they want to do it like that. because. The things like, let's say, uh, I'll give a good example. Uh, once a year I do this 360 degree evaluation on me. Think about I'm the CEO, I'm the founder, I own 100%. There's nobody above me in this company can t uh, tell me what to do. Maybe except my wife. <laughs> <laughs> She's the boss. <laughs> so I can do what I want, but if I ask people, so, so we have this survey, you know, they have uh, about 10, 12 questions and, and uh, a great need. 
one to ten, uh, one worst, ten best, and they are created. And then there is a start, stop, continue section. So start something we want, uh, they want to start. Stop something they want to stop. So think about here, if I do something wrong, bad behavior, it's going to come right there, stop, right? And then continue. Something good, they want to continue. So they fill it out, it will be sent to uh, uh, other, com other company, they sort it out, put it all, of course there's no name, anonymous, put it and sort it, it comes to me. So, and we have uh, every month, monthly luncheon, that we share what's going on at the company, share everything, and uh, share uh, even financial statement, P&L, balance sheet, all the, all the money, how much we earn, all show it, all transparent, 100%. And we share all that. And then there, I'm going to bring my grade, and then I'm going to confess. <laughs> What I did wrong, I'm going to, I have to say sorry, I'll not do that. Uh, and something, sometimes, um, you know, all the good stories that they put it in, well, yeah, it's all good. So I read fast, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, uh, you shouldn't pay attention to that. So I, I really have to focus on that stop, something they want to stop. Then. Um, Sometimes uh, uh, there's miscommunication, they, they didn't understand that I tried to have them understand why I did this, that my, my intention wasn't that. So have them understand that they know. And, and then through that kind of system, then I earn their trust. I don't have to do that by, I do it with humble, uh, serve them, then I expect the same thing any, anybody in the company do that thing. And I didn't expect, actually, our VPs, they started to do that. I didn't tell them to do it. Isn't it wonderful they do? They ask and they get great and they get to do it. So think about if the company can, you know, from, from the top, they can ask others, great, me. if something I did wrong, I'll fix it. So that, that happened. So, uh, and, and through that process, that the rest of 50% of complaint. So this people part, hiring 50% done, the other 50% through this building company culture, how we behave, then you form the people there, then the company cannot go wrong. You know, anything we do, let's say, uh, if I, if I want to change our business to maybe Chinese restaurant, we'll do very successful because we have that people and the leader that has God's word in it in order to write the right, right, right way, then we will do any kind of business in uh, the right way. So that whole people part complete, then you know, that's it. That's uh, maybe secret of uh, business success. And my name is uh, David Kim, and I actually work for a very similar franchise licensee company. And I just want to say I respect the, just your, the way you lead your company and how you abide by the Word of God. Uh, my question for you is how big is your team, and, uh, and how do you manage, uh, let's say, uh, a certain uh, stress or a certain situation where something goes wrong within your company? How do you manage specific situations like that to um, bring the unity back together? Um, it, in, in our office right now, uh, it's not big. Uh, there's 70 people in the office. 70? Yeah, 70, 70 people in the office. And then um, we have a remote area. Uh, people work uh, in other state too. And of course, we have stores. Uh, stores has people too. So each store is uh, managed by managers, so uh, they, they, they handle pretty much uh, most of the case. But an uh, office, how we handle it, it, it it's uh, a lot of times that I know delicate things happen and, and, and a very difficult situation happen within us or sometimes or with uh, franchisee or vendors, uh, that happens. Uh, why we have this uh, 
here first thing. I would do it by this principle, so THTK. I always tell them THTK. So which is, uh, when you become totally honest and, and tell what you feel, everything, and, and also tell other people also what's happening, everything, that sometimes people tend to use this honest is the other person's uh, the wrong thing. Everything trying to bring it up, right? But if you think of the next word, TK, totally kind. The end goal of this being honest and a debate, uh, going into debating is uh, to make it better situation. So that's what we're doing, kind. So if you do just totally honest, so honestly speaking, okay, show up, reveal everything, so some dirty things will come out and all that, yeah, and it, it, it is going to be mess. But if you have that totally kind, you know, good, good heart, kind way, bring it up, and then a lot of times, you know, we solve a lot by doing that. So, um, people talk about the, the, the process we solve problem, uh, looking at this, they, they look at Oh, this company is like, act like a non-profit organization. <laughs> but I think it, it is a healthy thing. Yeah, we, we are really uh, for a good thing. It's a non-profit organization. We for God, God's uh, you know, point of view. We want to be like that. Yeah, it is difficult. It, it's hard to solve, but... Uh, so we put the THTK uh, is uh, the best way to solve it to, to any situation. Yes. For 13 years you are doing your business and you will come with the uh, best for But I don't know, uh, you have experience in financial problems, crisis problems, or financial crisis. How do you overcome um, well, financial difficulties, I didn't really have that much of financial difficulties, but I know this one principle that, um, let's say the Bible, and, you know, there is, there is a verse where, uh, do not, uh, do not let money. So, you know, when you read that, it's, it's, what is it, what is it? It is about, or, and, and uh, do not guarantee, do not guarantee, uh, and, and, and it actually, you will lose your clothes, right, it's all that. So in, in a way, some it's, it's harsh. Why do I don't talk about that? And I have this basic, uh, uh, principle that it is all about our greed. So when, let's say, when you have a hundred dollar, and uh, you know, let's say, uh, uh, most of us here are Koreans, right? We are very aggressive, trying to. If we have a hundred dollars, we want to do hundred twenty dollar business, <laughs> aren't we? Right? But. If you if you uh, if you try to be very careful and try to be uh, uh, not to be greedy, that means if you have a hundred dollars, always try to satisfy within that. What you have, you have to be satisfied. So if you have that concept, uh, instead of trying to borrow lots of money and then. With hundred dollars, you wanna try to borrow another hundred dollars to two hundred dollar. You're trying to buy two hundred dollar business. And that I, uh, this is my personal opinion. I don't feel that's God's uh, you know direction. I think we have to satisfy with what we have. So let's say if we have hundred dollars, then I would do maybe sixty dollar business, and then something goes wrong. I still have $40, I can still survive. 
So I, I have those ba very basic principles I do, and so somewhat stubborn. And, and we, our company, we, we don't have any debt. Uh, we have uh, office building, we have uh, manufacturing, and all that. Uh, everything we don't have any debt at all, and uh, and in that way. Uh, so in, in 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 a professional business people point of view, that's somewhat dumb, right? Like you can borrow a lot of money. Actually, with, with that cash flow, you, 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 you can borrow a lot. You can make a lot bigger and all that. But uh, I try to be, try to satisfy with what I have, and, and but uh, try to satisfy what you have within, uh, for you, but for others, you want to be generous. For others, you want to, when you need to help, you really have to go extra miles, right? Because that's in the Bible too. When your friend want to uh, walk you know, one mile, you walk two miles. Right? So for others, you want to be generous. But for yourself, you want to make it very stingy. Yeah. I think that's uh, God's way. So I try to practice that. So, so be, Maybe because of that, yeah, he blessed so much. I didn't have to go through a um, big uh, financial crisis. And, uh, pretty, most of, pretty much most of the time, always within the budget, and we don't grow. And when when you look at this uh, return on investment, like fifty percent, hundred percent, you know, your eyes just close big. Actually, all your days we have uh, ROI of one hundred percent, one hundred fifty percent. So think about you put hundred dollar one year, you get hundred dollar, hundred fifty dollar back. <coughs> what a crazy business, right? Then anybody would go out, borrow as much as possible, and they want to build a store. And I think I don't think that's God's way. I, want, I have to be within uh, my limit. So what I did was I did everything within our cash flow, our our cash coming in. I build only that much. Within cash flow, I build only that much. So we, we own about 10% of our system uh, and everything cash built. So there is no debt. Very tricky question, <laughs> but uh, uh, I guess that you know how each individual is like. But maybe it's a personal opinion. I, I try to be uh, like if you know trying to impact others, trying to make uh, others Christian. It is, it is important, but more important is like I said, actually yourself. And I still believe in that. So a lot of times. Uh, going other country, other place, or even coming here, sometimes I struggle. Am I really, is it worse to do it? Should I do that? Because I'm, I'm not as good as, maybe as, you know, from God's eyes. I don't think I, I am as clean. So I, I'm struggling, I'm struggling every day. And I think that is more, more important, you know. So, you know, I know it's not really a financial answer, but, uh, you know, try to focus on yourself and build, build yourself uh, more, make it ready for, for God. Then, you know, someday when, when God prepares something, then it will be, you know, God's way is not, not painful. He, he makes all these things ready, then you follow them. It's so small. It, it's, uh, it's really small. I think one time I had uh, some, some nonsense uh, loss that I had, a $16 million loss. And so this is crazy. But anyway, I had to, uh, uh, it's God favored me so much. I had 100%. So I didn't have any problem. But anyway, 
that time, uh, I, you know, I thought about this. You know, God, if I did wrong in your eyes, I'll pay. I have to pay. Even though I have to sell my company, if I did wrong, I have to pay. That's God's way. And if I didn't do anything wrong, you know God, you will take care of it. And then about one and a half years, this lawsuit uh, going through, I had a peace of mind. <clears throat> so people think, this, this guy's crazy. Can, you know, maybe couldn't sleep or like this. You know, think, think about the case. But uh, I was okay. I was, I was just normal. And uh, because this is his. This is not mine. Why worry so much? So uh, I, I think it is more about uh, proving yourself first. Where did you get uh, your biblical foundation, or what was your turning point uh, you had uh, you know, for the Christ? Um, well, it is not just just one certain moment. Of, of course, I had an experience of. Uh, Holy Spirit to work on me and after that, but it is not that one certain moment and, and I, I totally change. It's not that. I think it's more of uh, uh, I'm so blessed that my wife is there. And if you think about somebody pray so much, and a lot of times in the morning I wake up, somebody's praying so hard and raise <laughs> So you're going to feel guilty, right? <laughs> oh, I'm sleepy. And <laughs> so when you have that, that much pressure, you know, I, can't, I cannot go wrong. <laughs> and this is everyday thing. <laughs> and and, uh, and it, it, I think it, it is through everyday practice that, I mean, she pray and I pray. I start the day with uh, my prayer, and uh, I have a prayer room in, in the office. And I use that also, and um, and at, uh, in the evening, uh, my daughter. I have just one daughter, so three of us will get together. We have a worship service, and my daughter will play guitar, and I'll play guitar together. So we worship and and I finish the day. So every single day we do that. So. If you think about it, if you do it every day, you cannot go wrong. So I <laughs> had to do that, right? So I, I don't think it, 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 uh, it, it is uh, it's not a one-time moment. It is an everyday practice, and then every day struggle. And I, I want to be honest. I struggle every day. Sometimes I'll, I want to have something better. I want something easier. Uh, I want to sometimes... <clears throat> Why my wife is listening to that every single day? Can she change a little bit? No. I think about that too. But when I'm going back, I realize, no, it is, uh, he's crazy. He gave all this. And it's an everyday practice. Uh, make it, and and uh, uh, all those complaints, that, you know, hopefully, that's getting maybe diminished a little bit, a little bit, and then. Someday, uh, maybe really, I can be really holy, uh, uh, the sacred life. You know, someday. But I'm, I'm trying so hard, but I feel like I'm still far away. You know, I, I struggle every day. So, yeah, I'm trying, trying hard. <laughs> All right, uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
is a fellowship of Christian companies for Christ. I went to their annual conference uh, when Ron Henry and uh, the chairman, uh, uh, Terrence Chapman, invited me. And uh, I was so blessed. And our, our KPM, if our staff has not done yet, yet uh, we will be a member of the FCCI. And we will like, really see many uh, key members go to the uh, yearly conference uh, coming September of next year. Uh, I would like to have a round Henry just briefly you know, share about five minutes. I know it's uh, late in the night, but uh, when you came all the way this way, and this is what the information. I mean, we live in America. We are so disconnected from the hearts of the mainstream of Americans who have done these. They have worked together and they build up together resources and so many materials and uh, so many role models for 30 years. Right. Ron this is a little bit of a surprise. I came here to uh, learn, like many of you, and and uh, and uh, Philip. I want to thank you for sharing your heart because um, uh, you would be what we would say is an FCCI company because you understand the fact of who you work for. And, and it's not so much what you say, it's what you do and what you model. And FCCI was formed by a group of businessmen some 35 years ago, uh, young businessmen in their 30s and 40s, who were trying to figure out how does this Bible work in my business? They didn't hear much about it on Sunday, but they spent so much time in their work and how does it work? They started meeting together and what's developed is a global organization of Christian business owners. And uh, I just found out uh, yesterday, because I just came back from the headquarters, that uh, the resources that this organization has put together in 35 years is now being used in 83 countries of the world. And the key is by meeting with peers, because I, I don't, no one asked Philip this question. But he did mention reference a lot about his wife, but you can't take this journey alone. You have to have peers to breathe into your life, to hold you accountable, to encourage you, and pray for you. Peers that understand, and that's what FCCI has. And their resources allow that to uh, really provide. And, and we had the distinct pleasure of having uh, Mr. Kang here and Kevin join us in uh, Maui this week, this past year. And uh, with 500 Christian business leaders from around the world. And uh, if you want to ever know what a mountaintop experience is, we had it there. When you have that many people from that different, many cultures and that many places around the world, and understanding who Christ is in their life and in their business, it's amazing. So uh, we'd love to have you there. It's, it's uh, FCCI.org. Please check it out. And uh, there's resources available for you to help anybody. So, but I thank you for allowing me a chance to share. Again, thank you for coming. Uh, Steve Ball, one of our uh, team leader, uh, will come out and have a closing prayer. Thank you, Father, for this assembly, Lord. May we look always look upon you for grace, for favors, for your wisdom. Lord, would you bless all who are here gathered here today to do your will, Lord. May all of us in our respective profession, field, and business look towards you for guidance, look towards you for wisdom, and really work to please you, Lord, to become godly women and men that looks to expand your kingdom in everyday life. Would you look upon us with your grace that you guide us in each moment of our lives, not only on Sunday, but all six, all seven days, 24 hours, as Philip has graciously mentioned. 
We thank you for your word. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.